Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us welcome one another as Christ has welcomed us. Lorelai Wesselhoff is 
still on the mend. Carolyn Hirsch is continuing treatments for her cancer, but won't have chemo. Sharon Allison is recovering from hip surgery. And my mother, Shirley Dura, she's still having a hard time. It's been nine days since she fell and broke her nose. She still has the deep, deep, deep bruising through her face and her hands and arms. She can't use them at all yet. So um, we're still taking care of her. We're all taking our time and taking our turns. Try not to rush her. We told her that God needs her to slow down before she goes back to volunteering. Does anybody have anybody else for our prayer list? That's good. Okay. Thank you. And now for the first lesson. Thanks, Heather. Our first lesson from Genesis chapter 3. Uh, we witnessed the aftermath of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. For they have eaten the forbidden fruit from the tree. Calls out to Adam, asking, where are you? Adam responds, admitting fear because he is naked and has hidden himself. This marks the first consequence of human sin, shame and guilt. Rather than focus on the transgression committed, the passage reveals at least two points to meditate on. The first point is the woman's acceptance of her mistake. I ate it, she said, plainly acknowledging her fault. The second point is the reality of a radical kinship between everything in this garden. In the beginning, God created all things to live in harmony and in peace. To live as a family, we are reminded that we belong to one another as family as we do God's will. In today's second lesson, St. Paul explains it perfectly. He writes in his letter to the Corinthians that we should look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. And the tent maker from Tarsus adds, if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. And then for our gospel lesson from Mark, we explore the definition of family. Listen carefully and you will hear the words, Jesus came home. In this passage, Jesus redefines what it means to be home and challenges us to reconsider what it means to be family. He is accused of being possessed, of using the prince of demons to drive out demons. His neighbors and relatives call him, in effect, a madman. Yet, Jesus doesn't respond with shock or outrage. He's not even offended. He chooses another way, explaining who he is with clarity, reason, authority, and wisdom. You might even say he speaks out of love. Then when his family comes looking for him, he doesn't turn his attention to them. He looks instead to those who are surrounding him, those seated in the circle and listening to his words. What he says may have left them startled and even scandalized. Here are my brothers and my mother, he says, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. With just a few words, Jesus offers a new sense of belonging, of describing what makes up the Christian community. Here's a new definition of family, and by extension, a new way of thinking about home. And now, our lessons for the day. The first lesson is from the third chapter of Genesis. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, 
the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my salvation. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, with his hand. Yet with you is forgiveness. In the Lord, may he may be I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word, my soul. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is steadfast For the Lord shall redeem Israel. The second lesson is from the fourth and fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight mom momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what we can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in heaven, in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and the ruler of the demons, he cast out in demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying up, tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. 
A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here is my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Okay, instead of the sermons that we normally have, we'll be having a hymn sing this morning. So as you can see on page 7 of your bulletin, these are the, these are the uh, old, old timey hymns that we're going to be doing, and they're all in order. Uh, and you should have gotten a lyric song sheet along with your bulletin, so pull that out. It's got four pages, and we'll just go from page 1 to page 2 to page 3 to page 4 as we go through. So it should be all organized, and uh, I hope you enjoy singing all this stuff. So, okay. <laughs>
Okay, all right, here we go, man.
using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his grave. He descended into hell. On the third day,
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.